are grade 12s. Today we are going to be looking at HTML work for grade 12. But before we start on the grade 12 work, we're going to do a quick recap of the grade 11 work. So let's have a look. Okay, remember HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. And then your web page consists of tags and attributes. Now a tag tells the web browser how to display the words and images on a page and you put your tags in triangular brackets. We use notepad for our basics and the syntax is the way instructions and text is structured. Now you always have to have an opening and a closing tag and then the attributes are things like font color, size, bold, underline, etc. So let's look at some of the attributes. Your attributes are always specified in the opening tag and not in the closing tag. And they are always in inverted commas. Okay, so they are always written in inverted commas. And remember, every time you add something to your notepad page, you need to save and update it in your web page. Right, let's go and look at what our template in notepad looks like. Remember that we always start with an opening tag for HTML and then head. And then we are going to type in a title. So I'm going to click in between the title and I'm going to type in my web page. And then we are ready to save your notepad as an HTML document. So remember we go to file and we say save as. And then where it says save as type, please remember grades 12 to always choose all files. And then we are going to give it a name, my web page. And you always add the file extension, .html. And we are going to say save. So now, when I go and open my web page, can you already see that it's saved as a web page? I'm going to double click on it to open. And immediately you can see my web page at the top. Okay, so now grade 12s, let's go and have a look at a, I've already done an exercise for you. So here's the exercise. Here's the opening tag. We've given it a title called social media. I've added an attribute to the background of the page by making it yellow. You can see body space, BG color yellow. And grade 12s, please remember that we use American spelling for the HTML. So color, if you notice, is spelt without the U. Then I've added a heading. Can you see it's H1? I have underlined the heading with a U. I've centered the heading. Can you see I've put in a center tag? And I've changed the font color to red. So my actual heading is called social media. And if you glance to the right over here, you will see grade 12 that I have closed all the tags with a forward slash. So I've closed the heading tag, I've closed the center tag, etc. I have then given it a second heading called H2. I've made it bold. I've called the heading positives and I've gone and closed my tags. Then I have done an unordered list. Grade 12s, remember, you have an ordered list, which is numbers, and an unordered list, which is bullets. So I've, my first item in my unordered list, or bulleted list, is easy to communicate. The second is cheaper than a phone call, and the third is shared pictures. So I've done the same thing again with the second heading, but I've done exactly the same thing. And then the third thing I've added to the web page grades 12 is an image. Now, what you've got to remember with the image grades 12 is it has to be placed in the same folder as your web page, otherwise it won't display. And then I've added a link to another web page. So once I've saved that, let me show you what it looks like in the web page format. Okay, there's the heading. We put a solid red line in. There was my H2 with my unordered list of bullets. Here's my second H2 with my unordered list of bullets. There's my image. And then here's my link. If I click on the link, 
it's going to open to the link that I added in the web page. So here are the table elements. You have your opening and closing table tag. The TR stands for the table row and the TD stands for the table data. So that is the data you will be typing into your table. So let's go and have a look. Okay, here is what the basic tags look like for an HTML table. Can you see I have got, I've opened my table tag, I have table row, my first table data is going to say column one, my second is going to say column two, and the third bit is going to say column three. So that is going to be in the first row of my table. Then I've closed my table row and I'm now going to start another one. So I have got table data. My first bit of text is going to say first, then second, then third. And I've closed my table row, I've closed the body and I've closed my HTML tag and that would look like this. So let's take a closer look. Here is my table row. Here is my second table row. Here was the first bit of data, column one, column two, and column three. And here's my second bit of data, first, second, and third. Now, you will notice, grade 12s, that there are no borders in the tables. If you want a border in your table, you have to specify that that's what you want. You need an attribute to the table syntax for a border. And there's your table tag for a border. And the one means how thick that your border is going to be. So let's look at adding tables, borders to our tables. Okay, we've said we want a table with a border of one pixel. So I've added my table row. Now in my table data, I have said week one, and my second bit of table data is week two. I've closed my table row, and I've closed the body and the HTML. And this is what it would look like in your web page. Can you see that week one and week two now have borders around them? Okay, so now you might want to add a heading or a caption to your table. So a table caption adds a label to the table and you can also add a heading to your table. So the syntax for your um, table headings and captions is caption and TH for table heading. So let's go and look at something that we've already done. Right, I am not going to worry about the top. I'm just going to start here with our caption. So I've added a caption and I've said I want it big, I want it bold, and I want it underlined. And the text that I'm going to put into my caption is subject choices. So now I am going to add my table tag and I want a border, and you will notice that it says border. I've started my table row, so I've said, and my table heading, I've said surname, and my table data is Smith. Then I'm going to add more table data of Makafola, and more table data of Naidu. I've then closed my tag for my table row, and I'm now going to add a new table row with a new table heading called subject. And the table data for subject is going to be maths, cat, and it. So let me show you what that's going to look like in a web page. And here it is in your web page. Here's my caption. Here's my table heading, that's its surname. My second table heading was subject, and my data with a surname, Smith, Makafola, and Naidu. And my table data for my second row is maths, cat, and IT. So that is quite simple to do grade 12s. And you mustn't worry that you are never going to remember these tags, etc. When you write your exam, you will be handed a list of table tags, just like you would get a list of formulas for maths or for science. So you will never have to go and learn these off by heart. So really don't stress about that. So now let's look at cell padding. You might wonder what cell padding is. Cell padding is the amount of space between the cell edge and the cell content. By default, it's two pixels. 
So a cell padding attribute gets added to the table syntax. So we would say table border of three pixels, and we want a cell padding of 10. Let me show you what that's going to look like. You will see that I've added a table border tag, and within that table border tag, I've added cell padding of 10. My um, table row is the same. It's exactly the same as the last web page. So let me go and show you what this will look like. Can you see it looks like this? And it is a lot wider, you can see, than the previous one that I did. And I'll actually show you how different it looks. Can you see the difference, grade 12s? This is a lot smaller and narrower than the last one. So it's a good idea when you do a, a table to add the padding to your, um, to your attributes. First of all, before you can create a web page, you need to plan your web page. It's quite important that you plan it on paper first. You need to evaluate the needs. You need to start with the purpose of the website. And you need to know who the target audience is going to be. So now, it's a good idea to create a storyboard. Okay, so why a storyboard for a website? It's going to make your design process much easier and more efficient. It'll save you time and money, and it'll help you visualize your results. Okay, this is an example of a storyboard for a web page. It's always a good idea to plan on paper first. So you have good and you have bad websites. Let's look at a bad website. It's difficult to navigate. You can't find the information that you need so easily. It's difficult to read. The backgrounds are not simple. There's constantly running animations. They skip tunes and music. There are misspelled words and improper punctuation. Wouldn't that just irritate you? The hyperlinks don't work and the information is outdated. Something you have to remember, grade 12s, is if you are going to have a website, you have to update it with current information all the time. Here's a scenario. It's your final year in high school and you want to create a web page to illustrate your five years in high school and keep contact with all your friends after the final examination. Okay, grade 12s, let's look at our notepad part of our HTML document that we're going to create. I've started off with a title and I've called my web page my five years at high school. I've added a big heading that says activities and a slightly smaller heading that says academic and a paragraph. Then I have added an unordered list called best subjects. Remember grade 12s, an unordered list is bullets. And in my list, I have added computer applications, technology, Afrikaans, and mathematics. I've added a second heading for sport. And then I've added an image. And then right at the end, I have added a table. I've added a background color to my table, table data. So now let me show you what this is going to look like in a web page. So here is what our web page is going to look like. So grade 12s, you need to remember when you are planning your web page for your PACS project or for any other web page, you have to plan it on paper first, decide exactly what you're going to do before you actually go and do your web page. Um, good luck with your HTML grade 12s. I hope you really enjoy playing around with it. Thank you for watching.